Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Elixir Foundation series. So in the previous episode, I showed you guys how to render a static page uh, using Elixir. Um, you know, basically just render like a static HTML page. Um, and I realized that, you know, I actually need to provide you guys with an example React project because that's what we're focusing on is our server side rendering. So, you know, I wanted to uh, work on, uh, you know, a React project that I can give you guys. You can clone it and you can put it in the project to follow along. So you don't have to actually develop anything in React in order to, you know, work, test out server side rendering and all that stuff. So um, if you take a look at the screen over here, I've got the Artellectual. So Artellectual is the mother company um, behind Codemy. And essentially, you know, this is a, a page built in React and it's got like, it's, it's a very basic single page application. Um, and as I develop it, I'll, I'll update the, the source code so you guys can clone down the more complex version, like the updated version. Um, but for now, this one has got a feature called uh, uh, code splitting, which means when I access the project for the first time, uh, right now it's instant because I've already accessed it once. But if I go into, if I clear the cache and I, uh, let's say for example, I go into Safari, I go to .artellectual, um, you'll see it, it actually load, um, you know, it load the, loads the component in. Uh, and basically the component is, uh, you know, it's, it's using code splitting, uh, which means it's only downloading the base JavaScript. So there's a network activity going on, which is gonna be a good demonstration case for what we're trying to do, which is trying to do a server-side rendering. And, and doing code splitting and server-side rendering, these are the two things that, you know, in the React community, this is known that it's something which is pretty difficult to do right. So our solution is gonna support that out of the box. So what I wanna show you guys is, you know, this is a very simple page, uh, have a look through it. So I wanna mention that I also have the source code. So over here, if you go into, um, you know, into GitLab over here, uh, so I'm gonna paste a link to this in the description area. Um, so you can get the source code, you can clone down the source code and uh, basically, uh, you know, you can use this as a project to follow along doing server-side rendering. So what I'm gonna do here in this episode is I'm gonna actually clone down the project and show you guys how to set it up to make it work with our Botiful server-side renderer. So um, let's hop into the code over here. So over here, I'm in the Botiful project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a git clone and I'm gonna paste the URL, but then I'm gonna type assets. So everything's gonna live inside the assets directory. Uh, and I'll show you guys how to compile the project as so well, what we need to do in order to compile the project into static files. So here it is. So uh, I'm gonna go into the assets directory. So if I do uh, yarn run dev. So uh, if you clone down uh, you know, the project, you'll see that it has a, like a git directory in there as well. Uh, so you see it has a master branch. So we need to be careful and remove the .git directory. So that now it's using the git directory in the main repository. Uh, so yeah, let's first run yarn run dev. So we see what we have. So actually yarn install. So we need to uh, run yarn install first in order to get everything, all the dependencies and all to install. Um, so just a brief um, about the project. It's using Bootstrap for the CSS framework. I'm not using Bootstrap JS or anything like that because I believe you know when you have a React project, you can write your own components very easily. Uh, anyway, that's beside the point. We're not gonna focus on that. So now here I've got yarn install. So I'm gonna yarn run dev, uh, showing you guys how the project actually works. Um, so once you have that, you'll be able to access the project uh, using um, localhost 8080. All right, it's HTTP, not HTTPS. All right, so there you go. That's the project right there. And so the component down here that you see uh, except for the nav bar, the component down here is actually being downloaded lazily. Um, what that means is it's basically code splitting, um, you know, downloading the component uh, later on. So basically as the page progresses, as we build out our project, if it gets bigger and bigger, it's not gonna download the entire JavaScript. It's just gonna download the minimal part and it's gonna slowly download the, the other parts as, we, as the user is using um, the, the site. So uh, yeah, so with that out of the way, um, you know, now you guys can get this uh, working in your development environment. So what I'm gonna show you guys how to do is actually build the project. So if I build the project right now, 
it's going to build it in the DIST directory. Now, in the previous episode, we talked about you know using the priv directory um, to you know to in order to load the static uh, page. So I'm going to show you guys in this episode as well how to actually configure this project to get it to build the production version into the um, into the, the 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 priv and then a static directory. So um, Right now, you can see here, we have uh, this um, disk directory. So this is, this is the default of Webpack, is that it's going to build it into um, the disk directory. So let's try and run it by default, uh, yarn run build. So now you can, you can see that um, it's going to download it, uh, and it's going to actually build the entire project and uh, put it inside of the dist directory inside the assets. That's not what we want. I want to show you guys just, you know, the default setting, and then I'm going to show you guys how to configure it to actually build into the DIST directory. All right, so here we go. So we have the dist directory. It's inside of the assets. We want to leave the assets directory clean from any builds. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the dist directory. So this is what we're going to get when we build. And so I'm going to delete the dist directory right here. And I'm going to show you guys what you need to do in order to get um, everything working, you know, building into the correct directory, which is the priv directory and then static. All right, so actually the magic of it all is right over here. So you can see that we have this path over here and it's pointing to the dist directory. And so what we want to do is we want to change this dist into um, something that looks a little bit more like this. Priv static. So basically the static directory is going to be our entry point for our for our Elixir code. It's going to look in there uh, when it wants to serve our static site. So we actually want to build it into our priv static directory. So the other configuration we need to take care of is this clean webpack plugin. So this clean webpack plugin is if we run a consecutive build, it's automatically going to remove the old static directory so you can put in the new stuff for us automatically. And to do that, uh, all we have to do is uh, change our directories around. So to be something like this. And then here, root is going to be dot dot priv. So now, uh, if I actually go ahead and build, so yarn run build, it's going to actually build it into the priv directory. All right, so there we go. So that's the static uh, folder right there. It's all built. Um, so now let's actually try and serve our, our React app using this setup. So if you followed along up to into the previous episode and now you've got this all set up, everything should work for you. So let's go ahead and start the server. So IEX S mix. So you see here, so okay, let's install dependency. So mix depths get. IEX S mix. So it's compiling the code over here. All right, so now our server started. Uh, and so let's, if I head over into the localhost 8080, you see, okay, so you, you see that it's giving us this loading. So it's actually only loading our HTML, it's not loading the JavaScript. So you can see that from the server log, it's getting a 404. Now that's because we haven't whitelisted the directories that it requires just yet. So what we're going to be doing is here, uh, we just need to add uh, JavaScripts and style sheets and assets directory into the whitelist over here. So now uh, if I uh, run the server again, I go ahead and do a reload, everything should be working. So now this is the statically built, everything has been built. Uh, so now we're, our server is actually serving, so you can see now we're getting 200s. In, uh, in our uh, static, uh, in our site. Um, so, you know, now everything is being served stati statistic statically. Uh, so basically this is the compiled version from Webpack. It's being served by our uh, Elixir server, uh, our uh, plug uh, static router over here. Uh, so what do we need to do next? So, you know, I'm gonna take a pause in this episode right here. And what we're gonna be doing next is I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna talk you guys about um, you know, what we actually need to do next. So, uh, you know, we need to, you know, first of all, 
you know, based on the previous episode, we have three kinds of users. Uh, we have actual users who can who have browsers and can render JavaScript, and we have bots that cannot um, that cannot render JavaScript. So what we need to do is we need to pre-render the the actual page so it doesn't require to uh, JavaScript execution to the bot. So um, the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to talk a little bit about Croxy and how we set all that up. Um, you know, to make sure that, you know, we can actually uh, pre-render stuff. Uh, so actually, even before we set up Croxy, we need to determine which kind of user is accessing our server so we can do the proper procedures, like if we need to pre-render or we, need, we can serve something from cache or whatever, and we need to discuss caching as well. So uh, all that stuff is coming in the, you know, next episodes. Um, so if you're following along, uh, you know, thank you for following along and uh, you this video is a free video on YouTube uh, if you want more episodes on elixir check out our um, site codemy.net and we have a whole series on elixir um, and you know the next episodes are not going to be free some of them may be free some of them may not be free and if you want access to everything nine bucks a month is all we're asking for and uh, with that I want to wrap up this episode I'll see you guys in the next one